Hello and welcome back. My name is Corey and you're my rubber ducks for the evening. And this is the series of episodes where we are creating Tang, a custom programming language, template language actually, um, from scratch using nothing but our C++ skills, a terminal window, Vim as our editor, Flex, Bison, ICU, Google Test, and our wits, I guess. <laughs> and um, we've been trying to flesh out a lot of different parts. And one of the things that I know that we need, and I've been, okay, it is still on the back burner. I'm planning on working on getting better um, reporting about our bytecode stuff, better location reporting, better commenting. That way when you're examining the bytecode, you can see what caused the different parts to be uh, calculated. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, like I said, that's on the, the back burner, the to-do list, so to speak. But um, one of the things that we know that any template language needs is the ability to to perform percent encoding. And so I thought, you know what, let's take a break from all the other stuff and just work on some, work on this. And um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, before we get into it too fast, well, I always say this, you know, nothing up my sleeves. This is 100% uh, live coding uh, test watch. There we go. I'll be compiling on the right hand side. 100% live coding, which means you see all my mistakes and all of my oops, I forgot how that worked type of stuff. We're probably going to see some of that today because for the percent encoding, we're going to use Flex again. Uh, it's a great tool, and um, by using it a lot, that's how I learn. First, however, I've been working on cleaning up. Well, what do I normally do? I normally say git log, and as you can see, the last thing was episode 74 that was the last commit um however if i say get status there are some differences and the reason for that is did i already open this yeah okay so here is our uh language stuff and what i did is i started going through and started looking for cycles specifically if we look at under files uh under source and, you know, it's probably easier to do it this way. And a good example, I guess, program is, oh, not source, I wanted to include, I'm sorry. Include program.hpp, there we go. And if we look at this, uh, let me maximize this. So as you can see, the uh, all of our tests are passing. That's a good thing. Uh, for, program this part we have some cycles so program will include tang base but tang base will include program and i don't like having these circular references but sometimes they're needed well i thought about it and i was like you know what i bet we can get rid of them and uh so we have them between program and tang base programming context and then what's the other computed expression and garbage collected yeah those two so what we're going to do is well i've already done it i'm going to show you the difference so if i say get diff let's see in context uh dot hpp there we go um i removed program dot hpp and in doing that, it wasn't even needed. Um, but I had to add in optional as a header because, well, that used to be part of program. And since I'm not including it anymore, I have to specify it here. And let's see what happened in, oh yeah, and that's the only change that needed to take place in context.hpp. Um, garbage collected.hpp. I had to include macros and uh, was able to remove computed expression, and then just do a forward declaration to it. Uh, let's see, in program.hpp, there we go, program.hpp, uh, remove tang base and just did a forward declaration. And then the only thing that we had to do was in program execute, since 
program no longer had Tang Base referenced, um, I had to add that to program dash execute. So I had to pound include. That's the only differences. And the the point of it is, in fact, I'm going to. Um, by the way, you just saw on the right hand side, I compiled it and it has all these changes in it. So I compiled it and it is, uh, all the tests are passing, so it works. What's the status? And I'm just gonna go ahead and get commit, uh, removing circular dependencies in .hpp files. Okay, and now, why? Well, make um, docs dash PDF. It's going to have a lot of changes, but we're going to come back to this and we'll see the garbage collected, what it does, and then we'll open program. There we go. Let's just refresh. There, you can see garbage collected no longer has all of that and uh, computed expression, of course, no longer. Uh, there's, yeah, the circular reference just isn't there. And program, if we look at its thing now, um, it no longer calls out to, which one was it? Uh, Tang base and context. So it calls out to context, but context does not call out to uh, program and tang base was the other one and did we remove that one yes we did so anyway that is helpful now I'm going to go ahead and again get status you'll see a lot of docs so get add docs get commit dash yeah update docs with dot uh, hpp cycle removal and the only reason I'm doing this is so that because we're probably going to need uh, to use the docs at some point today and I so I want the changes on there but I don't want those changes cluttering up if I say git diff for example. So, okay, fine. We have committed that. Now, what do we do? Well, we want to do percent encoding. And why? Because again, remember, we are writing a programming language, or excuse me, a scripting language. And specifically, the end goal of this scripting language is to be able to output uh, an HTML uh, formatted output, yeah. Uh, that is, you could generate email messages with it, or a web page, or anything that needs HTML output. And part of that is rendering links. And links have a special encoding, uh, as opposed to the HTML escape thing uh, that we did earlier, HTML escaped, now there's a uh, percent encoding. And I think I've got, where are you? I have a uh, uh, the page here, the reference page, make it larger so that you can see it. Percent encoding or URL encoding is, it says you can uh, encode arbitrary data in a URI or URL if you're one of the us common folk but URI is just a more specific wording for that part. Um, anyway, um, yeah, here it is. So basically there are reserved characters and these are characters that if you include them, they mean something very specific. And um, if you want an actual colon, for example, you don't, and you don't want its reserved meaning, you have to uh, encode it using a percent. So it's down here somewhere, colon, there it is, percent 3a. And that's the hexadecimal encoding for it. Uh, but uh, these, you can see capital A through Z, lowercase 
A through Z, uh, 0 through 9, the dash hyphen that is, the underscore, the period, and the tilde, tilde, whichever. Uh, those are all unreserved. That means they pass through just fine. And um, there are others, I'm not, uh, where's the space? Because the arbitrary binary, oh yeah, 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 here. Um, the space is uh, percent two zero, but it's also a plus. By the, why is it percent two zero? Um, two zero is the hexadecimal encoding for, isn't that 32? Yeah, hexadecimal. Um, yeah, that's 32, which is the ASCII character for space. But where is the plus character? Ah, oh, there we go. Um, There we go, okay. The encoding used by default is based on blah, 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 with a number of modifications such as new line normalization and replacing spaces with plus instead of percent 20. Yeah, and that's really common. So you'll see pluses instead of percent 20 just because it looks nicer, which means if you want an actual plus sign, you have to, uh, um, where is it? Or did I just pass it? <laughs> oh, there it is. Percent 2B. Um, what is that number? 32 plus, what is B? 11. So, uh, 43. Um, yeah. So, there was one other thing I was going to say about this. Yes! Non-standard implementations. There exists non-standard encoding for Unicode characters, but it's not specified by any RFC and has been rejected by the W3C. So we are not going to need that. Now we've already written the stuff that could recognize Unicode character points or Unicode characters and um, encode them in this way because we did it with our HTML encoding. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but yeah, that's not standard. So what are you supposed to do? Um, should convert all other characters, uh, to bytes according to UTF-8 and we are operating, our language is operating under the assumption that everything is currently encoded in UTF-8 anyway. So the very bytes that appear in UTF-8 will just be converted into the percent encoded versions of those bytes. Yes, that's what we're doing. Okay, so we are scanning through a string and we're going to say, if I run across an, a capital A, then output a capital A. If I run across a lowercase a, I'll put a lowercase a. If I run across an ampersand, put out a percent two six. If I run across a space, as is commonly mentioned down here, uh, we could do percent two zero, but it's just more common to use a plus. So if we run across a space, we'll replace that with a plus. If we run across a uh, an actual plus will re, uh, replace that with a, uh, well, wherever that was. <laughs> it told us the code. Um, oh, there it is. 2B. And so on and so forth. That's what we're going to do. All right. Now, since this is a new flex thing, that means we've got to, oh my goodness, we've got to... <sighs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, we're going to go into the make file first. Got all these AST nodes, computed, now we've got HTML escaped, 
pers HTML. We're going to call it percent encode, not HTML encode. Um, percent encode. Yeah. So Uh, let's see here, down to here, plus four. We're going to substitute HTML escape for percent encode. Yeah. And where does this need to be used? So HTML escape. Oh yeah. You know what, we're just gonna put it right there. And now percent encode. And it's going to be a part of test Unicode string. Uh, percent encode dot O. And And we're going to be working it with our test string, yeah. You know, it's something I've been seeing all along in here and it's been bothering me and I've just never fixed it, is that. There. <laughs> Since I'm editing the make file anyway. All right, so we don't know how to make flex percent encode dot L. Um, that's what we're going to do next. So, I think if, if I just look in Flex itself, if I copy, HTML escape and call it, what did I just call this thing? Uh, <laughs> brain just went dead. Percent encode dot L. That's the first thing. All right, and uh, we're going to need that percent encode dot HPP. So, And the include HTML escape dot HPP and it's going to be percent encode dot HPP. I'm gonna look at the make file again just one more time. Um Let's look for the word percent, percent encode dot O, got an object directory. There's that, percent encode. Test unicode string, okay, that's fine. Yeah, we got it all covered. 
Uh, and these are just complaining that we had the exact same things to find because we haven't edited it. Okay, so test, test uh, Unicode string. And yeah, flex percent encode and then include percent encode. Oh, and we also need include Unicode string and source Unicode string because we will use that as our interface. Yeah, okay, we need all of that open. And we're just going to Sorry, just trying to figure out how I want to do this. Um, these are all the substrings. And we'll do this. Okay, and and what are we going to call this? We will call it percent uh, encode s and it should be abc plus def yeah Send encode. And I'm going to go ahead and quit just so I can edit the make file one more time because um, if I look for the word Unicode string, There we go. Um, we should have But, okay, so Unicode string relies on that, but it also relies on um, HTML escape and HTML escape ASCII and unescape. We should have been doing this all along. A 
ski dot hpp and obj dir ski dot o okay that That should be a capital E. Okay, so that's fine. It's not compiling yet, not supposed to. <laughs> Let's go back to all of these things that we gotta do. Let's see, first of all, we're going to pound include, no, this is the test, not this one, not this one yet. Unicode string dot HPP. Wait, this is the There we go. This is the unescape and HTML escape and return a percent encoded version of the provided string. Not that. This. Uh. Thought I hit copy. there for details <laughs> all right This will be percent encode call it P, why not? P everything else the same. Okay, now it's going to complain. It doesn't know what percent in code is. Uh, does not name a type. Well, are there others, or is it just that? Str. Am 
Am I missing something? That looks right. Let's go ahead and get the person and code stuff <laughs> set up. And we'll probably have to come back to this. And, oh, that's why. That's what I'm missing. Yeah, now it doesn't know what percent encode is. Okay, well, we're gonna do that now. So, percent encode.hpp. This is all of the, uh, okay, percent s. We need to change HTML escape with percent encode. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing with um, escape with percent encode. All right, and just remember, let's see, the YY decal is that. Okay, so we're returning a string, so that's good. Um, for the percent encode. Scanner. Whose real name is going to be It's not going to be Tang Tang Flex Lexer. Tang percent encode. Now you may remember the last time I tried to do um, or at least maybe it was when I was starting off with the, the HTML escaping. This took forever to figure out what the problem was. And it's um, because that name right there, I was shortening it. And it <clears throat> it must end <clears throat> excuse me with flex lexer. And it must match with this up here. So... Um, that one right there has to match, well, I'm just saying it's what we define in uh, in the flex file in just a moment. So does anything else need to change? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, for the Unicode string.cpp, we probably haven't pound included the class. Um, we have not. We still haven't done the uh, the flex class either, so. Uh, let's see, type was not, oh, because it doesn't use type. Um, let's see, B3, percent encode we just have the yyn and out we're not using the type okay and why does it have type in what we have here is because we copied it from HTML escape ASCII in which case um, we were passing in a type so this does not have a type yes All right, now let's work on the flex. So this should be fine. Tang HTML escape flex flexor, okay. Wait, 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 no. It's not HTML escape. Um, percent encode. T 
tang percent encode. All right, what else? This needs percent encode. All right, keep going. Uh, right now, so if we just leave this as is, it's going to be doing an HTML escape. We're about to fix that. I just want to see it compile. And failing a test. Okay. Uh, it passed through ABC space DEF just fine, uh, but we expected it to have a plus. So we need to fix that. I think... And where is that? This right here. Do I want to leave this up here for the moment? The reserved characters versus the unreserved. Hmm. You know what? We're just going to I'm going to see if I can juggle all of this really quickly. Um, I don't need this valid byte thing. Uh... Is there anything else? This scares me. <laughs> How about this? Return YY text. And uh, remember that doesn't pick up the new line. So new line return YY text. Let's see if it still compiles and fails that one test. That's what that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, unrecognized rule. Oh, probably because nine sixty nine, which is right there. My slash is facing the wrong way. Okay. Did we get, did it give me an error uh, for the percent, uh, this, when Flex is compiling it, no, it did not give me an error. Uh, if, however, I were to remove the new line rule, oh, wait, where is it? Come on. Yes, it does give me the little error message of warning um, the dash, <clears throat> excuse me, the dash S option, which is no default, uh, is given, but a default rule can be matched. In other words, I didn't take into account all of the possible things. So, okay, so we're going to go back to that new line. Um, hmm. <laughs> so what all do we know that we need to do? First of all, can I do just a space and say return plus? Will that make my test pass? Probably. Is that the way it should pass? No. <laughs> but our test does pass. Okay. Uh, let's go back to our tests and make a better test or add a test because this is not a bad test. It's just not the only thing that we need. So let's put a plus here and instead of a plus, what does it need to be? Uh, where are you? Not that window, this window. 
the plus should become percent to B. And so that should be percent to B. And that's going to fail. How on earth do we get a percent to B? Let's see. I think it's easiest to go ahead and let's let's go ahead and write our rule for all of the the unreserved characters. Um, space becomes a Let's write a rule, and this means any of, so we can say a to z, or lowercase a to z, or 0 through 9, or um, Oh, the, right here. I was looking at the wrong thing. The dash. Now, the dash normally means what you're seeing. Whoops. This right here. Um, it means through. So we have to escape it. And that's, is that the backslash? Yeah. Uh, same way with the, oh wait, what about the underscore? Underscores can go by itself, but the period has to be that and the tilde. Any of those return YY text. In fact, we can probably do one or more times return YY text. Unreserved characters. Unaltered. Okay. And it's probably not going to change our what we're passing or not. It didn't. Okay. But what does that leave us with? Everything else should be encoded like that. Yeah, I mean, this is just saying the same thing. So if there's a slash there, that means a delimiter. But if you want an actual slash that's not part of a delimiter, then you have to um, use percent %2f. And it says, uh, where was that? Percent %2f or percent %2f, uh, uppercase or lowercase. We're just going to always use uppercase. Uh, same way, question mark means a query. The pound uh, will have a, that's the fragment identifier. Um, they call it pound or hashtag or number sign. Okay. <laughs> um, older programmers will call it pound. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just going to stop there. How do we get the hexadecimal thing? Well, let's see. We could do this here. Now, I'm thinking... Uh, this is going to be um, other character needs to be percent encoded. Now, the longest that this can be, I'm, I'm just saying, would be a percent FF, and that's it three characters. So if I have 
a char. Buffer of size four. Can I do it that way? Can I write it like that? I'm just gonna hit save and see if it uh, unused variable, but it didn't give me a compile error on the syntax. Sorry, I'm old and forgetful. But the the s print f that's what I want. Uh, where are we? S print F for C plus plus. I can do with that char star format. There's one where you give a length though, isn't there? S N print F. Yeah, 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 yeah. N stands for the length. So we give it where uh, S N print F where we want it to go. I'm just going to use size of buff, which is going to be four, but whatever. Uh, what we want to be put in there. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to put a dash um, just so you can see what's going on. And then we know that this is going to match only one character because of the way we wrote this. So yy text is a pointer to a char, which we want to dereference, but that's going to be seen as a char, which is usually signed. So can I say You went 8t pointer instead of a char star. That's not undefined behavior. Um, too many arguments for the format. Oh, yeah, because I'm, I've got to have something there. And you do that with a percent, you know, percent x, sure, uh, to give me the hexadecimal number. Still going to fail. That's okay, we'll be closer. Um, line 165. I was expecting a different output. Um, where in two, we need to go to, where's the test? Oh, one. 65. So this one failed. The plus went through unscathed. We were not expecting that. Oh, because I said return yy text. Return buff. Okay, look here. We're doing a little better here. ABC 2B. And there should be a percent there. So... How do we do a percent? Uh, because percent means there's a variable. So uh, the format, 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 there we go. There, a percent. A percent followed by another percent will write a single percent to the stream. Sounds good. Uh, so we need two percents. And we're passing again. Yep. Test Unicode string there. If it fails, it's at the bottom and then it, because it stops. But uh, if it passes, it keeps going and does all the others. But this is gonna...
So this is going to be plus becomes, no, space becomes a plus. Plus is percent encoded. And you may wonder why am I doing the ABC and all that other. It's um, just to show that it works with that. All right, so. A new line. So let's just uh, a new line, and it says that it should be percent zero A. That's what it was, or D. What's the difference? Well, that's number ten, and that's number thirteen, and. line feed is number 10. Okay. We're encoding it as percent zero A. This should fail. Yeah, the new line passed through unscathed. So if we do that, can we just say period or slash in? Uh, no, it will give us an error. In fact, I, I should probably just show that or demonstrate that. First of all, I'm not happy about this. Well, let me just go ahead and show. There is no error. And if I were to say period or Oh, I expected it to complain right there, and it's not. So you know what? Fine, I'll leave it. But now why isn't our test passing? Because it's giving us percent %A, and it should be percent %0A. Why is it percent %0A instead of percent %A? Because uh, if you're trying to decode this, you don't know, is that supposed to be AD or just A by itself? So it's always two. So, well, there we go. So what can we use? We can use there. Uh, a couple things. It says flag width. We don't need precision. A length specifier. The specifier is the X for hexadecimal. I think it's the flags and width that we need. Uh, so the width is going to be two, but what are the flags? A zero. It left pads the number with zeros. So if we say zero, nope, nope, I'm in the wrong place. Zero two X Seems cryptic enough, it just might work. Yep, all of our tests are passing. All right, um, 
bringing this back just for a moment. And I was going to say, as of this point, we have it all. I mean, we've captured it all. We've got our unreserved characters. It's either unreserved, from our standpoint, it's either unreserved, oh wait, it's either unreserved or a space or it's something else. We don't care about the reserved because... Um, the way that this will be used is that, well, it'll say, <clears throat> excuse me. So basically our templating language will have like a portion of, of the, this, of the UR, URI or URL, URI, and, uh, it needs to be percent encoded and then a slash, but a slash is going to be like that, like trusted character. So it, um, a trusted string. So it should not be encoded at all. And the same way for a question mark or for something else. So this will only be called on the parts of the string that need to be, that are untrusted, but they should be um, URL encoded or percent encoded as opposed to uh, anything else. So, yeah, that's all we need to do then. I mean, we could do one more that's just random stuff, but. I mean, here. One more. And we'll just say a. Uh, Which one? Dare we grab this one? Um, I know that it's going to need some other characters in between it. Um... Yeah, you see, it's got all of that. Uh, notice the, the period came through okay, and the dollar sign came out as, where is this? Percent 24, and is that right? Dollar sign, dollar sign, hello? Tell you what, is there a dollar sign here? Percent 24, yeah. Okay, so this, I, I know it's, well, yes, I know I'm cheating. Um... Yeah, all of our tests are passing, but I, I'm cheating, but look at this. Uh, percent 24 is the dollar sign, but then FO, F, well, zero, whatever, 9F, 9F, 8F, 8F, B4, B4, and so on and so forth. And then the period came through unscathed. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um...
And like I said, I am good with that. Now, what about getting it into our language? Uh, to me, that's a bit more work, right? And we can come back to that, I think, uh, for another video. But for right now, this gives us enough work at this moment. So, what all did I change? Added percent in code there, blah, blah, blah. Make file stuff. Uh, just make file changes for percent in code. Added it to Unicode string. Added some tests. I think that's good. Just sorry, I was staring off into space, but because I, I was just thinking, is there anything else? Blah blah blah. Or, oh, how, that's how I could solve that problem, and whatever. All right, uh, we need to make docs because we have a, a couple new files to add to our documentation. Just as always, we're doing the, the tests on the right-hand side, while on the left-hand side, we've got all of our documentation. Get add docs. Modified, new file, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what episode are we on? Episode 75. The right hand side, as long as, uh, every, oh, well, behind me, as long as everything uh, compiles and the tests run, we'll get this committed. All tests are passing. It's always a good thing. <laughs> um,. Like, why is this so big? But it's because of that original change where we got rid of some cross stuff that put in major changes to the doc, uh, documents, the documentation. And uh, get push origin episode seven. What? Get push. Oh, I didn't tag it. Git tag, there we go. And the last thing, yep, 10,458 lines of code. Comments are at 3,500. Okay. All right. Uh, but hey, tests are passing, and that is always a good place to wrap up. So once again, thank you for joining me. And again, another fun use for Flex. So I hope it was uh, worth it. Have a great day, and see you next time. Bye.